Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to give you a very brief overview of the uh, Intel security flaw that's been exposed in the last uh, couple of days now. Uh, it's called Spoiler and uh, the spoiler alert here, huh, wordplay, uh, the spoiler alert here is that uh, AMD processors are good to go. They're exempt. The researchers that found this flaw were not able to recreate the issue on those AMD chips. And uh, now let's roll straight into talking a little bit about uh, sort of the effect that you may see in the near future from the security flaw. Now, the number one thing to know with this flaw out of the gates, if you are on an Intel core processor, any of the generations of core processors are the uh, Intel ones that are affected. If you're going back to the uh, core two duos and those, those things, I believe at least my understanding is those would be off the table at that point. But any generation whatsoever of the core processors will indeed be affected by this. And the biggest thing to know here is that the uh, the attacks, if they are used uh, exploiting the security flaw, can actually be done through JavaScript on potentially malicious websites. So really, a lot of the onus on protecting yourself ultimately falls on the user of the computer and making sure that you're not doing things that are potentially shady uh, in your computing tasks of the day. And especially if you have a computer that could be exposing uh, banking information, banking passwords, that sort of things, uh, this flaw could take advantage of a malicious website and expose those passwords and potentially open you up to a lot of damaging attacks. So beyond the just purely what you as a user can do, um, especially with your browsing to sort of protect yourself, it's important to note here that uh, the researchers look like they believe that this is not something that can be just software patched out. So a microcode update on a processor may be able to mitigate the issue, but it looks like any sort of microcode that does mitigate that issue is gonna lead to a significant performance hit and uh, what that means, we don't really know. We obviously don't have a microcode update to benchmark or anything like that, but it looks like a microcode update won't completely solve the issue, at least if you're wanting to maintain the performance you already have with your processors. But Intel may need to actually do a little bit of an architectural redesign to get rid of the flaw altogether. And that's gonna compound some of their issues that they've been having already with rolling out their 10 nanometer process and it looks like they're still gonna be stuck on 14 nanometer and now this could potentially delay 10 nanometer because one would assume if they weren't aware of the flaw while they designed their newer architectures, then you would think that the, the flaw is still gonna exist and they're gonna have to go back to the design table and sort of work to get rid of it or knowingly just roll with it knowing that there's this security flaw that exists and uh, it could be used uh, and exploited by uh, malicious actors to uh, do things like find passwords of users. So I, I can't imagine Intel would go that route, at least you would hope they wouldn't. In fact, this exploit is something that could throw a monkey wrench in the roadmap for Intel if this does lead to a significant redesign of the architecture or if nothing else, it's gonna consume time. And uh, with AMD rolling forward with Ryzen 3000 series processors that look to compete actually at the IPC level even, and if the recent leaks and rumors are true, the core counts on the mainstream processors are gonna be out of this world, Intel may be in for a world of hurt in the near future because this could actually hamper their ability to respond to the next generation Ryzen processors. And that, in my mind, is really part of this big story here, is uh, not only do you have this massive amount of people that is now exposed to this exploit, I mean, the vast majority of the market is currently still Intel's, this could really push us and, and start pushing people, rather, towards switching over to AMD. So that'll be interesting to see how the market reacts. It'll be interesting to see how Intel reacts, whether it be with a microcode update that could uh, potentially hurt performance quite a bit, or whether they're gonna just roll with uh, what their statement kind of points towards what they might do here. And I'll go ahead and read that. And this is from the Forbes article on the issue. I'll link that down below as well. But Intel's statement is, uh, Intel received notice of this research and we expect that software can be protected against such issues by employing side channel safe software development practices. This includes avoiding control flows that are dependent on the data of interest. 
We likewise expect that DRAM modules mitigated against Rohammer style attacks remain protected. Protecting our customers and their data continues to be a critical priority for us, and we appreciate the efforts of the security community for their ongoing research. So that's Intel's current response. I fully expect to hear more from them in the quite near future. But this is one of those things to just sort of uh, keep your ear to the ground on and stay informed, especially if you are uh, rocking an Intel system that is uh, potentially at risk for being exploited by this flaw on a malicious website. You know, always use uh, best uh, web safe searching practices. But I do wanna hear from you guys, what do you think the longer term effects of this exploit could be, especially knowing that Intel processors are affected, but AMD seems to be immune? Let me know down below. And of course, if you like these sort of quicker news type videos, give this video a like, share, subscribe, comment. A new way you can help out the channel is down below. I have an EVGA associate account if you're in the market for a graphics card and you want a discount on your end while also helping out my channel on my end, I will leave my associate code down below as well in case you want to buy a uh, graphics card or some other EVGA product through their store. And of course, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.